Good morning. I'm making some vinyl fronted bags. I've got the vinyl here, which you can probably just see. It's the most lousiest day. It is pouring with rain, so I've had to put my daylight bulb on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought I'd work these work with you through these. Um, they're really simple to do. Um, I've run out in my shop, so I need to make some more. Um, I don't think yeah, you can just about see my giant roll of vinyl. I think it's going to be a lifetime supply so um yeah it's um it's a really nice one actually but yeah i make the vinyl fronted bags you know for sewers and stitches and knitters and crocheters and cat hair flipping cat uh so yeah i'm just about to make some and i thought i would talk through it's a very simple formula to make these okay so i'm going to talk you through it while i cut this vinyl so if i can stand up again oh, ow. I've been walked to death again this morning, so um, I've got, I'll just get these here. This is, get your sunglasses on, right? This lot's really bright and colourful. Um, so I've cut, what you have to do is cut a background piece, which is like the inside of your bag, and then an outside piece, piece which is an inch wider all the way round. Okay, so that's like your bag formula. You cut your vinyl to the same size as your inside piece. And then I've got this down really <laughs> to science now. I've got a six inch wide ruler here. So I cut a piece. Let me see if I can explain this. Um, so whatever the width of your backing fabric is, I cut a piece of. Right, hold on. That was wrong. Whatever the whatever the width of your inside fabric is I cut a piece of what the backing fabric is going to be to make the the holders for the zips I'm just not really describing this very well at all am I um does that sound right they're not for that one anyway um I've just been doing all the ironing that's why it's all a bit messed up at the moment yeah so you need to cut a six inch piece of width to the inside measurement here and then you cut that at four inches and two inches and that makes your two holders for your zip it'll all make sense in a minute i think um and then yeah so all i need to do now is cut the vinyl because everything else is cut um yeah that's it really that's that's kind of all there is and then you just sew it together which i'll do with you so Bear with me while I just cut some vinyl and um, we'll get cracking. Now I cut it very roughly. Uh, it seems a bit wasteful, but um, I've found it's better to trim it once it's all stitched together than it is to try and cut this vinyl perfectly, in my mind. I've now lost my rotary cutter. Where have you gone? <laughs> oh, lordy. Um, oh, it's buried. You're hiding it from me. Rude. So, uh, yeah, it's um, it's too long here, but I, j I just leave it. And then I've got plenty of wiggle room. I haven't got a faff around. I also cut it a bit wider. It might seem wasteful, but like I say, I've got a massive roll of this stuff. And, um, yeah. So, that will go in front of here, like so. Probably not all the way up. Well, it doesn't go all the way up. And then I'll review this and see if it makes any sense. This bit goes on here, up the top, and it, you put the zip in there. This bit goes on top of the plastic, and you put the zip there, and then you encase the zip in there. I'll show you. It's easier if I show you. I'm not very good at describing these. I just need to cut these to size, and I'll be with you. Oh, dear. I'm glad you tuned in. Keep it together in sets and then I know I'm going to plonk it on the sewing machine, am I? No, I'll put it on my desk. My room's a tip again already, so I just I just kind of give up now. <laughs> I don't know why I'd, don't even know why I try and keep it tidy. I do like it tidy because it clears my mind, but right, let me just move this because it weighs a ton. Oh. 
I bought that roll of vinyl years and years ago. I have made, I won't say hundreds, but I've made a lot of these bags and it's still going very strong. When it's run out, I won't, I won't be making any more because the price of that stuff has gone up exponentially now. So, um, yeah, they'll become collector's pieces, maybe. <laughs> if there's any big bits left over, I do keep those and then I make smaller vinyl pockets out of those. Um, I'll put that in the back, actually. Uh, yes, I say it's a miserable blooming day here today. So um, it's quite nice to just have something to concentrate on and um, need to stitch so I thought I'd drag you along with me because if it's raining oh, move. If it's raining where you are you probably sat there bored as well <laughs> we did have a nice walk in the woods it was a sort of spitting it wasn't too bad this morning so but I do feel sorry for my two daughters who do the dog walking because they're out in this all day. Meanwhile, I'm going to be in my nice craft room uh, making making bags. I've got a couple of Etsy orders as well, so I need to do those. Oh, sorry if I just bashed you there. You are very precariously balanced on a bookcase. So whatever you do, don't start wriggling around, all right? Because otherwise, you'll be on the floor with a headache. Doesn't look straight at all. Are you straight? Should be. Oh, I don't think you are actually. Right, okay, so I need to tidy up the backgrounds here, that's fine. I just kind of picked the designs out of the fabric, as you can see, it's the most glorious, bright bright flowers and it's going to have that oh, it's going to be pretty very summery right okay yeah that's the background fabric it's like <laughs> lovely I like it I'm really into brights at the moment and I'm sure it is because my eyesight is getting worse so um, right let me move this ginormous thing as you can see I literally got a lifetime left on here <laughs> I've used half of it, believe it or not, so let me just oh, grab that. It is very, very heavy, unfortunately, but oh. it's good stuff. Right, okay, go pause here, get you over to the sewing machine. Well, I need to tidy up. Let's do that here, actually. I need to tidy up those... Um, kind of get it to size because it is a little bit easier I will explain it better when I get my head around it right you're not for that one you're not for that one I know one of them I did trim down so let me just um, reorganize myself here there should be a shorter nope you're not either right so they're the three bigger ones obviously One moment, please. I shall return to you shortly. Yeah, still a bit big, but anyway, that's fine. Right, so I need. So that'll go there. You'll go there. I don't need this much plastic for sure. As I say, you can measure these, you can totally measure them. Um, again, I have made loads. So I really, really don't measure them anymore. This is the one that needs squaring up, isn't it? I will give in and get my... I've got a brand new cutting mat sat underneath here. But I don't want to use it yet because they get wrecked. Although I haven't said that. I've had this one for years. I do like to have it a little bit squarer than it currently is. Those sticky feet are all very well and good, but when you want to just slide your ruler on, they're a little bit too sticky. As in, they won't let you move the blooming fabric. Um, the ruler, rather. Okay. That's a 
lot better. Doesn't need to be that tall, so that can literally go in half. Still won't get it 100%. I trim it once it's stitched. As I've told you already. Maybe I'll just stitch this one with you and it's exactly the same for the others. So perhaps that's what I'll do. And then um, you can see if you want to make one of these, you might. I don't know. You might not. And again, as I say, the outside, the background just needs to be an inch wider. Because what we do is we fold it in half and it's, it's self-based basically. And you fold it over. Okay, so you get your own. I won't describe self-based because you probably know exactly what it is. So bias, yeah, self-biased. I'm not a quilter, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just make things. Mostly I make it as I go along. Make it up as I go along. Yeah, it's going to look cool. Okay. Right, let me um, get you set up with the sewing machine. Trouble with this plastic, you can't blooming see it. Uh, and we'll get this one made. And as I say, the others are exactly the same. So bear with me a sec. Right, we're at the sewing machine now. Um, now there's various ways. I've got the vinyl here. I don't think you can just about see it. Um, the instructions that I had when I first did these, it said to put the zip on these first. But um, I found to put this one on the vinyl first makes it easier. I don't have to explain it really. I find it easier to put this onto the vinyl first and then sew this to the zip because otherwise you struggle to um, get it on. Um, get it on. I don't, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> anyway, let's just do this. I'm just going to stitch this on here. I'm going to move my needle over very slightly the other way. Um, I've got a grey sort of nondescript thread in the... Uh, well, it's a Guterman grey. Um, I find that grey just disappears into everything. So I don't usually clip, but I will just for the sake of the video, just to hold the plastic in there. Um, again, if you put the zip on first, it limits your ability to be able to put clips on because you'd have the zip and the other bit up the top there in the way. So this is why I do this first. That was the other reason I couldn't think why. Oh, I'm so good at these tutorials, aren't I? Uh, right, okay. It's on super fast, so I'm going to slow that down. It's not a normal 2.2. Um, I've got the foot of my... got the edge of my foot on the edge of the fabric, and then the needle is about... Oh, I don't know. Two, three millimetre away? Let me just put you there, see if you can see. It, you might jiggle a bit, but... Um, my sewing machine's not very well, I will warn you, it's making horrendous noises. It is booked in for a service, but it's not till after Easter now, so it was either that or I didn't have a machine for three weeks, and I can't cope with that, so um, anyway, here we go. And it does that power surging thing, which drives me nuts, but it's always done it since the day I got it. I don't know why. Just checking that the vinyl is still pushed in there on the way. It's quite important to um, make sure that your stitching is as straight as you can because it's very visible. Did you hear the power surge? 
Honestly, this machine, this is why I'm looking at maybe getting a new one. It's never been right since the day I bought it. So anyway, there we are. There's top stitch there and it just captures the vinyl inside there, which is what it's meant to do. So. Okay, so now we can attach our zip. And it's very simple. Sorry, it's right underneath you. So excuse me for reaching in front of you. Uh, right, I'm going to do um, two orange and two bright yellow because they kind of match the fabric. Um, you can choose whether to have your zip and opening from the left or the right. It's up to you. This zip is massive, which is why I'm going to try continuous zip because I keep on wasting zip. The trouble is, I know that if I buy one at like 18 inches i need a 20 inch one so i tend to buy the biggest ones and then cut them down and now because it is massive i can actually um overlap you know um, have this going beyond um it just makes it a little bit easier to stitch because you're not worried about uh you're not you don't have to worry about it matching up exactly so i've just put my zipper foot on um yeah but obviously when you come to cut your zip you must make sure that the head of the zip that bit is inside inside this bit we're about to stitch i'll show you in a second so i'm just going to put the um uh, i just need to come over a bit actually there would be good again I don't bother to pin but you do pinning if you do pinning so. yeah so the beauty of having the zip too long you see I've got plenty of wiggle room here so, I mean, if you do struggle with zips, that might be something that you want to do is get a really oversized zip because you just don't, you, just, you know, there's just no worries at all. You just kind of um, just stitch beyond and, and then just trim it up in a bit, which is what we're going to do in a moment. So this is the uh, four inch bit and it's folded in and then over again. And that is to basically it traps the zip this side now. So I'm going to put those over here. Very awkward to do with the camera going on of course <laughs> again pin it if you want to I tend not to bother um, yeah I just tend not to bother so you just need it to line up there change my foot to the other side Oop. No, 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 no. Stay. Thank you. I definitely need to move that over. Okay. I'll just do this slowly. I'll just check that everything's matched up underneath. You can just sort of feel it, really. So. check that's going to miss the foot I've got a bit of an odd spacing on my machine it doesn't sort of I don't know it's a weird weird machine the zip on like so so it's trapped in in the top and the bottom on the back it looks a bit but you don't see the back because it's inside so okay right I'll take you back to the cutting table now I need to I'll just um actually while I'm here um 
I was going to say I'll trim the zip. I'm just trying to think because I think I need to trim this plastic down on the edges as well as everywhere else. So that I don't forget, I'm going to move my zip head inside where the stitching is now. And I'll seal this end off. When I put the foot back on, where are you? See, but I know that's not going to come undone. That way, it's safe until I cut the other end. Where are you? Right, let's get back to the table. We'll tidy this up and make it fit our square. See you in a minute. Right, we're at the cutting table. So, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. So, basically, this piece here, this that we've just done with the zip, it needs to fit the top of our piece here. So, I'm going to sort of line it up. This bit goes right to the top. Okay, and then anything beyond this, the underneath bits everywhere. Um, so I need to trim the side of the vinyl, although it's pretty, it's almost not accurate here. In fact, I'll line it up there because that's where I stitched the zip in or zipped over, you know, stitched over where the zip would undo. So I just need to make sure we're straight up here and I'm going to whiz down here and across the bottom and then I know everything's you know right i don't i will zip um i will sew over the end this end of the zip but i'll do that when i um do the other bits of stitching God, i'm not making any sense at all if you follow this just let me know if there's anything that i can help you with. <laughs> oh dear trouble is i know what i mean just getting it in the right words see this annoys me wasting all this much zip but um, it's what it is at the moment i don't um i've got the continuous zips but can i get those flipping heads on can i egg so i need to go and watch a video <laughs> christine's home affairs she just does it and it just looks so simple and i don't seem to be able to do it so i will persevere and keep going like you do this is not the best angle to be cutting at but it's fine yeah so unfortunately i mean i know you can do things with zips so um before you cut this end make sure that your head is inside what will become the pouch okay but mine is so i'm just going to trim this very very slightly get rid of the excess plastic excess fabric and excess zip okay right so that's it it's at the right size my zip is on so i just need to put it on the backing fabric now without everything falling apart so if you have cut, I mean, you can trim now um, if you're if you've trimmed this down slightly, you can trim your background, but you need to have about an inch um, all the way around. Because what we're going to do is um, do the self binding bit now, which is easier than anything. I'll be honest with you. It's the only way I can do these because I bias binding is really, really my nemesis. We do not get on. So having found this method from somewhere or other, probably on Pinterest, because I seem to live my life on Pinterest. I guess about an inch. You're about an inch. You're not straight at all. What the heck's happened here? Oh, you folded over. That's really helpful. I will make that work. <laughs> and now we do a bit of jiggery pokery, all right? Make sure that's on there. Okay. Ah, that's why I was lining it up there and it's not. Is 
this fabric is not the easiest to work with it has got a little bit of stretch not a lot but a little bit and it's enough that it will throw out your um seams so let me just get my clips because i do need my clips for this bit i do have to give in you can um you can iron your folds if you want to i tend not to i do give it a press afterwards but so it's not hard now basically we need to fold this over and then over again and it traps the fabric the backing fabric and the why not i'll do it i'll do it the right way <laughs> just because you're watching so you just give that a, just a finger press i say you can get the iron on it if you want to but so this fabric just seems to want to walk itself all over the place. So just now clip and this will enclose the raw edges of the zip and everything. OK, so you do that all the way around. I'll put you on fast forward. Right, okay, so you can see kind of where we're going to go with this. My zip is my zip head. Yeah. My zip head is inside now. It's got to be inside because we're going to stitch all the way around. Again, I'll probably speed you up because it's a little bit monotonous. I'm just stitching about, um, if I can, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge here, a couple of millimeters, um, and then I'll. I just want to try and get these corners. Uh, you can mitre the corners. Um, I I don't I just I just do a square corner and it works for me so um, and I'll get a label put in there as well before I forget I'll do that at the machine because they're over in my drawer over there right so back to the machine I've just put my little label in the top there so I'm going to whiz around this and uh, put you on a bit of fast forward um, so I can just sort of chill out and not worry about boring the life out of you and <laughs> um, the glory of this system is or this way of making these um, normally uh, if you're stitching on vinyl you need a teflon foot but because the foot actually doesn't really touch the vinyl it just works really well so um, yeah it's it's really good I, I like this method and again I'm not uh, very good at bias binding so I find this self binding really useful and easy to do that seems about right okay so the edge of my foot is on the edge of the fabric here and I've moved the needle over so I've got about just over an eighth of an inch that'll do it'll be fine all I'm doing is trapping the background the vinyl and the actual backing fabric all together that's all that's happening here see you on the other side
that's it. checking my seams make sure everything's all right looks good to me so there we are one fabric or oh, yeah, one plastic fronted pouch so you get to see what's inside it and there's fluff in there <laughs> story of my life fluff so i think what i was trying to get at is the fact that you can make these any size you want you don't need to have a pattern just you know this this piece just needs to be an inch bigger than your inside piece if you were as it were so um and then that's it i mean the rest of it as i say this this bit at the top is four inches folded in half and then folded in again so it makes like a bias tape and the bit at the bottom is two inches again folded in half and then half again to make a bias tape and all that is that one there is to capture the vinyl and then this one is to capture the top of the zip and to make the top of the pouch if you like um yeah and and then obviously zips you know you do whatever zips you want really so there we are <laughs> oh that was probably as clear as mud anyway i'm going to continue to make the other ones um yeah i might do a little bit on the end and just show you the finished ones okay see you in a bit right so we're all stitched so there's a little one <laughs> and then three bigger ones two with the yellow zips and one with orange so it's taken about two hours i suppose something like that they are very bright and sunny and springy so <laughs> but they are great great little pouches um you can use them as wash bags you can f use them for sewing crochet knitting uh epp i've got one that i use for english paper piecing um my brother's got one that he uses what do you use it for tobacco pouch because he's a smoker still um yeah so um they can be anything pouches i'll be honest with you these ones ended up um where's my ruler there it is uh, they ended up 13 inches by 10 inches ish um yeah so they're a great size as i say you can get your knitting needles in you can get your crochet hooks in um i usually then put a little charm on the zip here because uh, i use these ones with an open eye there so i put a little charm on with a bulb pin um yeah there we are this one will be a smaller one it'll be like a sock size you can put your pens in there paper do what you like with them so there we are i hope you found that even slightly useful all i'm trying to get across is the fact that you don't need to do all this measuring cut your background fabric to what size you want and then cut your backing fabric an inch bigger than your front fabric if that makes sense and then you need a six inch strip which is exactly the size of your inner fabric you cut that at two inches and four inches the four inches makes the top bit the six the two inches makes the bottom bit that goes onto the vinyl you cut your vinyl um i mean initially cut it to the size of your inner fabric and then you can trim it down from there and then you zip you know just to size and that's it there we are all done I'm going to go and get some lunch because my stomach is growling like mad. <laughs> so I'll see you on the next one. Bye.